Greetings. Today I'm going to show you how to cast aluminum. Now it sounds difficult and maybe scary, but it's really quite simple. There are many different ways to cast aluminum, but I'm going to use what's called the lost foam sand casting method. It's really the easiest and simplest way to do it, but it doesn't produce the highest quality alloys or castings. It's however perfectly sufficient for most general purposes. So let's get started. Okay. The basic concept for any casting process is, of course, to melt something and then pour it into a mold. There are many different ways to cast aluminum, but this lost foam sand casting method is by far the easiest. Basically, I'm going to cut the piece that I want to make out of this rigid polystyrene foam. This is the same kind of foam you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm going to bury this into the sand, and I'm going to pour a big cup of molten aluminum directly into it. First, I'll cut a foam disc 5 inches in diameter with a 1 inch opening on the inside. Here I'm using a little table I made just for this sort of thing. This is called a hot wire foam cutter. It's basically a guitar string with some electricity running through it. With that, you can make nice clean cuts on this polystyrene foam. The next thing we do is cut what's called a flute. So we're just going to cut this quick rectangular piece about four or five, maybe six inches long. It's a bit of an angle to it. Break it off. And the purpose this will serve is it's going to be hot glued to the part I'm trying to cast. And this is the part that's going to stick out above the sand where you pour the molten aluminum. So let's go ahead and glue that on there. We're only going to glue around the outside edges. Uh, so the glue doesn't create kind of a barrier for the molten aluminum to flow through. And you just glue it on there and hold it for a second. Okay, wow. Now that we have the part that we want to make cut out of rigid polystyrene foam with a nice flue hot glued onto it, we're going to need some aluminum to melt. Aluminum cans won't do. They're more paint and dye than aluminum. And aluminum forms this nice hard oxide layer on its surfaces wherever it's in contact with oxygen. Since aluminum cans have a lot of surface area for their volume, they're very thin, it's a lot of aluminum oxide, which is basically the aluminum equivalent of rust. So you're going to need big chunks of aluminum, and I have plenty for just such occasions. The next thing we're going to want to do is have some sort of container to hold our aluminum in as it melts into a giant puddle of molten aluminum. Well, what we have here is a nice piece of steel, basically a big steel cup. This is actually a cylinder sleeve from a motorcycle engine. It has some bolts welded to the side of it that will allow me to hook onto it and lift it out of the kiln without getting anywhere near the molten aluminum or the red hot steel. And we have one more bolt welded to the bottom here that will help us grab it and pour it out. Okay, third, we're going to need some heat. Aluminum melts at 1100 degrees Celsius, or about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to need something that gets really hot. Well, propane works great. Propane is cheap, easy to get and use, and it burns hot enough to melt aluminum, but not hot enough to melt steel. So, perfect. And connecting a pretty commonly available weed burner or roofing tar heater such as these which you can find at Home Depot or Lowe's works pretty great and they put out about 500,000 BTUs of heat. Let's fire it up. Okay, well we're going to need something to contain all of this heat. This is the heart of the operation. This is the actual kiln. I built this a few years ago. He's seen some better days, but doing, still doing a pretty good job. This is constructed out of multiple rectangular pieces of steel welded into an inner hexagon and an outer hexagon. Between the inner and outer hexagons, it's filled with lava rocks and concrete. This is going to help create a nice insulative barrier to keep that heat in. Inside of this kiln, we're going to take the steel crucible, put it on some spacers at the bottom of this. You'll see a nice hole cut into this here. This is where the roofing torch is going to get inserted. And then we have a nice hexagon lid here, also filled with lava rocks and concrete, with an FDE handle added onto it. 
Okay, the last piece of this operation is a big old box of play sand. This is just regular sand I purchased at Home Depot or Lowe's and let it dry out for a couple weeks. So we're going to take the part that we want to make, we're going to bury it in this sand leaving just the very top of this flue sticking up over it. And once we have a nice molten cup of aluminum we're just going to pour it right into that spot. And uh, this is when the magic happens. It's really quite amazing. The molten aluminum it's so hot it vaporizes this polystyrene foam. The vapors of the polystyrene actually leave through the pores of the sand and the molten aluminum, because it has such a high surface tension, prevents any of the sand from falling in. So if you pour it right, which is not that hard, and pour it at the right speed and you have the right amount, you can get the aluminum to exactly fill up the space that the polystyrene foam was occupying before before any of the sand has a chance to fall in and block your pour. Hey, all right, well, there you go. Here is the end result. Uh, came out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, the excess will be cut off and used later, uh, remelted in further castings. And this disc, this is the part I was aiming for, that's going to be machined down to its final dimensions on either my lathe or my milling machine. Uh, this is still pretty hot, even though it's been about 45 minutes, so I'm going to put that down. I hope you enjoyed watching this and learning a little bit about uh, aluminum casting as much as I enjoyed making the video. Thank you for watching.